Дорогие друзья, уважаемые коллеги, 1 апреля 2021 года исполняется ровно 20 лет, как представительство издательства Макмила начало свою работу в России. Нам очень приятно за все ваши получить такие поздравления от вас. И э, спасибо большое, что вы и сегодня подключились к нам, разделить с нами наше праздничное настроение. И те, кто будет смотреть нас сегодня в записи. Наш праздник э, будет не только сегодня. Э, наши партнеры, дистрибьюторские компании в разных городах России также организуют свои праздники для вас. Приходите, пожалуйста, э, в магазины наших дистрибьюторов. Вас ждут конкурсы, приятные подарки, сувениры, а также вы можете приобрести пособие издательства «Макмиллан» по очень привлекательной цене в праздничные дни «Макмиллан Эдукейшн». Мы сегодня приготовили для вас маленькую викторину, и хотелось бы начать с, такого, с маленького экскурса в нашу историю и разделить с вами наши приятные моменты. Потому что во многом издательство Macmillan Education в России было первым, и нам есть чем гордиться. Я буду задавать вам вопросы, а вы можете отвечать в чате. Наверное, нет такого преподавателя английского языка в России, который не знал бы об экзаменационной серии издательства Macmillan, Macmillan Exam Skills for Russia. Это, эта линейка постоянно пополняется. Появляются онлайн-тренажеры, интернет-ресурсы, которые дают вам возможность готовить учащихся к экзаменам с использованием современных цифровых ресурсов. А мой вопрос к вам, уважаемые коллеги. А в каком году появились первые пособия экзаменационной серии? Если помните, это был сборник тестов. Пособие по грамматике и лексике уровня B2. Также было пособие «Listening and Speaking» и «Reading and Writing». Так, я вижу даты, есть еще варианты, есть правильные варианты. Я видела первое, по-моему, Милена ответила, спасибо большое. Это 2006 год, то есть вот эти первые четыре пособия. Дальше линейка пополнялась новыми пособиями. У нас теперь не одно пособие по грамматике, по грамматике а целая линейка пособий от уровня A1 Plus до B2. Ну, а вот это пособие, этот словарь, уважаемые коллеги, наверняка у многих из вас есть или на работе, или дома. А может быть, многие еще даже студентами по нему занимались. Поставьте, пожалуйста, какую-то ответку в чате, чтобы я видела, что это так, что это, этот словарь вам... Я вижу плюсики, спасибо большое. Действительно, этот словарь Macmillan English Dictionary for Advanced Learners он а, был награжден такими наградами, которые ни до него, ни после ни один словарь не получал. И там действительно был революционный подход к написанию словарей, и вот это деление на активную и а, пассивную лексику, но мой вопрос к вам следующий. А какое издание словаря сейчас доступно? Напишите, пожалуйста, в чате. Второе. Так, еще есть варианты третьи. Есть ли у нас правильный онлайн? Да, я вижу правильный вариант ответа. Действительно, сейчас, а вернее, с 2008 года словарь Macmillan Dictionary в бесплатном доступе находится в онлайн. Это онлайн-словарь. Он сохранил себе все те черты, которые были в бумажной версии. Теперь слово можно с 2008 года услышать. Ей появился блог, есть видео, квизы, есть цезоры, словарь синонимов, и постоянно этот словарь пополняется, потому что появляются новые слова, и в онлайн-версии словаря также находят отражение все новые слова. Спасибо большое за ваши ответы. Среди вас, уважаемые коллеги, наверняка есть преподаватели, которые участвовали во многих семинарах издательства Макмиллана и конференциях, которые мы проводили во многих городах. И наша весенняя конференция всегда была очень популярна, и всегда было очень много участников во всех городах, в которых мы ее проводили. И мой следующий вопрос к вам. Как вы думаете, какое количество преподавателей принимало участие весенних конференциях издательства Макпилан, которые мы начали проводить с 2002 года. 
мы сейчас говорим о весенней школе или весенней конференции. 5 тысяч, Алиса, спасибо большое. Миллион, спасибо большое. На самом деле было более 3 тысяч участников ежегодно. Может быть, и среди вас есть, уважаемые коллеги, те, кто принимал участие в наших конференциях очно. И вот уже с появлением новых технологий издательство «Макмиллан» расширило свою аудиторию преподавателей. И на вебинарах издательства «Макмиллан» ежегодно участвуют 12 тысяч, более 12 тысяч преподавателей. И мой вопрос к вам. А в каком году был проведен первый вебинар? И мы были первые, которые начали вообще проводить вебинары. Мы еще, мы писали слово «вебинар», но всегда поясняли словом «интернет-семинар». Это слово еще не было в обиходе. Я вижу даты, 2007. На самом деле первый вебинар был проведен 12 ноября 2010 года. То есть вот совсем недавно мы праздновали десятилетие проведения вебинаров, которые, еще раз подчеркну, мы даже не называли сначала интернет-семинаром. Мой а, следующий вопрос а, будет касаться сообщества прогрессивных преподавателей, которые мы создали в 2012 году. Это Macmillan Teacher Plus. И как вы думаете, сколько преподавателей а, состоит в сообществе и подают за, заявку ежегодно? Это преподаватели, которые используют в работе учебные пособия нашего издательства. Я вижу ответы. Спасибо большое за такое активное участие в нашей викторине праздничной. 3500 преподавателей являются участниками профессионального сообщества Macmillan Teacher Plus. Спасибо большое, коллеги. Следующий вопрос будет касаться электронных учебников, цифровых учебников. С 2020 года издательство Macmillan предлагает не просто бумажную версию с ходом доступа к цифровым ресурсам, к цифровой книге, к онлайн-рабочей тетради или к Presentation Kit для преподавателя. Теперь можно работать только по ходу, приобрести только код, и преподаватели, учащимся, открываются все возможности для проведения дистанционных занятий. И сейчас на слайде вы видите пособие, но не все, которым доступен только код, еще и код. То есть вы можете не приобретать бумажную версию, а работать только по коду, и будет открыта и цифровая версия учебника, цифровой учебник, онлайн-тетрадка. Каких здесь двух пособий не хватает? Причем это самые популярные пособия, которые тоже доступны только по коду. Абсолютно верно, я вижу правильные ответы. Это Gateway, Second Edition и Academy Stars. Все пособия, которые вы сейчас видите на экране, они доступны по коду. Ну и последний вопрос, он будет касаться сегодня нашего главного выступающего, это Дэйв Спенсер, наш коллега, преподаватель, методист, автор пособий. И вопрос следующий. Дэйв сам как преподаватель понимает важность встреч с коллегами. И поэтому не только в вебинарах Дэйв участвует, но и... Очень часто в, как раз в конференциях и приезжал в нашу страну несколько раз. И вопрос следующий. В каких городах Дэйв был с выступлениями? Может быть, вы как раз были на... Какое количество городов посетил Дэйв с выступлениями? Да, Москва и Санкт-Петербург, безусловно. Чаще всего я вижу Екатеринбург, да, в Ростове пока Дэйв не был, Казани тоже. Я покажу вам сейчас Новосибирск, Екатеринбург, абсолютно верно. Это пять городов, это Санкт-Петербург, Москва, Самара, Новосибирск и Екатеринбург. Ну и прежде чем уже передать а, слово а, Дэйву, еще очень а, такой маленький приятный момент. Я хочу а, поздравить победителей флешмоба, вы сейчас видите их, аккаунты в социальных сетях. Уважаемые коллеги, большое спасибо за ваши отзывы по пособиям издательства Macmillan. Если вы сейчас себя видите, пожалуйста, напишите нам в личных сообщениях, и победители флешмоба получат полный цифровой учительский доступ к любому пособию, которое они выберут.
Спасибо вам большое. Ну, а мы переходим к нашему основной нашей части. И я передаю слово Дэйву Спенсеру, который познакомит вас с новым пособием для подростков Gateway to the World. So, Dave, over to you. So, Dave is a teacher, teacher trainer, material writer, and the author of the Gateway Second Edition and the new course Gateway to the World. So, I'm waiting for Dave um, to unmute himself and to switch on his webcam. Hello. Hello. You can hear me. Phew. Good, everybody, yes, if you can tell me in the chat box, if you can see me and hear me. That is excellent, that's looking good, that is amazing. Um, wow, uh, I, uh, I enjoyed watching the video and uh, I enjoyed Natalia's introduction. Of course, I couldn't understand much, but from the context, I could understand a lot. And uh, I, watching the video, um, it reminds you that um, publishers like Macmillan, Macmillan Russia, they aren't just there with books, they're there with help, aren't they? And uh, I could tell from your comments about how much help you feel you get from them, particularly, I think, teaching um, from home, teaching online. Uh, Macmillan Russia, I'm sure, have been your best allies, your best friends. This is... Um, sincerely just an amazing honor for me to be with you today. Um, I want to show some photographs of me in Russia. I think I've had a very special relationship with Russia from the very first time I visited. Um, I'll show you some of those pictures at the end. And uh, we're also today, we're going to try to do a little experiment with some breakout rooms. I think maybe Natalia mentioned where maybe I can even uh, say hello to some of you personally uh, in those rooms, which would be really exciting. So that's a, that's a little surprise at the end of this session. Okay. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit today about um, Gateway to the World, okay? Gateway to the World, my uh, new course, which is, um, of course, uh, just out. Um, lots of people have been asking me what's the difference between Gateway Second Edition and Gateway to the World. Um, today, I want to explain a little bit about what is new, also uh, some of the features and why I wrote them. By the way, in the initial video, I saw my own name in the in one sentence, in the same sentence as the names of Tolstoy and Chekhov. So I'm feeling pretty proud there. Um, that was very nice to be in the same sentence as Tolstoy and Chekhov and somebody else who I can't remember now. Right, we're looking at my new book, Gateway to the World. Now, some people ask why, why do we need new versions of books? And I think one obvious reason is that um, that's because the world keeps changing, right? Um, it's been changing a lot in the last year, the last, the last two years. The world keeps on changing and English keeps on changing too. Um, I have a text um, in my new course, which is called English, the language that never sleeps. And I think you'd agree, right, that English just never stops evolving. It never stops growing, um, particularly in terms of vocabulary. And we're going to see some examples and how that reflects to also to what is happening in the world. So the book is reflecting what's going on about that. Now, um, for example, lots of new words are being created. And I just want you to have a look at this list. And um, you don't have to explain any of them, but uh, do you know them all? Do you know all of these new words? Flexitarianism, plogging, upcycling, sharenting, FOMO and phobo, snaxident, and gastrophysics. Okay, so somebody knows some of them, right? But not all of them. Right, well, today in this session, by the end of this session, you will know what all of those words are about. Um, and you'll you'll find out uh, thanks to Gateway to the World, okay? Now, the first one, flexitarianism, somebody at Katarina has just said that they can guess. Would you put in the chat box, what do you think 
the first word means flexitarianism. You can probably guess, right? What do you think a flexitarian is? Any ideas? Right, eats vegetable and meat, like a vegetarian. So flexible, ability to adapt to situations, diet, a new bonkers religion. It's not a new bonkers religion. Right, okay, some of you have got it. Um, it's not being flexible about everything in the world. Somebody mentioned vegetarianism. There is a connection between flexitarian and vegetarian. And so a flexitarian is somebody who does eat meat, but they don't eat much meat. So they're, they're like vegetarians, but they're flexible. If sometimes there is meat, they will eat it. So it's not that they are against eating meat. It's just that they uh, limit the amount of meat that they eat. And there are several good reasons uh, why people may decide to become a flexitarian. Um, and this text is explaining why. One of them is because um, cows, of course, so many cows, they actually produce lots and lots of methane, which is bad for the environment. So, for example, red meat can be particularly bad for us. Also, to produce um, so much meat, we need to cut down lots of trees to create the land where they can actually feed. And also, of course, it's not very efficient because cows need to eat lots of cereal. Um, and so they're using up another food type. Now, um, this text is explaining all about um, being a flexitarian. Uh, it gives you lots of statistics about why it could be a good idea. Um, so again, what it's saying is that, you know, not to give up eating meat, but that eating less meat could be a good way to um, help the environment. Uh, as it says, the title, Save the Planet, Eat Less Meat. You notice that I put a question mark, okay? The question mark means that this text is not saying you have to do it. It's saying that it might be a good idea. And personally, I think it might be a good idea. Kate has just asked if I'm a vegetarian. No, I'm definitely not a vegetarian. In fact, funnily, my brother is a vegetarian and my daughter is a vegetarian and my son is becoming a pescatarian. Unfortunately, I do like meat, but I do try and eat less meat than I used to. OK, so this idea of being a flexitarian, um, I think it's quite a good idea. But what I want to know is what do my students think? OK, I know what I think, but I want to know what my students think. And so, of course, if you know Gateway Second Edition, you know that we have critical thinking. And in Gateway to the World, we have this critical thinker section also. And it says here, in your opinion, does this text give you convincing arguments or statistics to reduce the amount of meat we eat? Now, um, we then ask the question, and this question is really important, what makes you say that? Because what we're trying to do is encourage students to give a rationale, to give a balanced answer. A student might simply say, I think it's stupid being a flexitarian. Or another student might say, it's great to be a flexitarian. But I think that the important thing here is that you don't just say it's great or that it's stupid but you give reasons and it's encouraging the students to do this. It says, what makes you say that? Use ideas in the text and or other facts, opinions and experience to justify your opinion. So in other words, this is um, encouraging students to give a balanced, reasonable argument. And um, you, you, somebody's mentioned this is a controversial issue, and that, that's true. And also, I think what is really important, when we ask these critical thinkers questions, we have to be open to any answer. So they could say, you know, flexitarianism is stupid because as long as they can give me an argument, I think that's great. I just want to see them giving me a logical, clever, informed argument. So the texts, of course, in Gateway, as you know, are giving them information about the real world. And then what we're trying to do is to get them to think about that real world. Um, now, 
when I wrote Gateway to the World, um, I realized that many English exams do not just test English, they also test um, thinking, they also test opinions, they also test building arguments. Um, and in fact, the PISA test, um, the PISA evaluation, which is done around the world, they are also creating a new test, which is about creative and critical thinking. And so what I've done in Gateway to the World, what is really important, what is a really new um, element, is um, this new spread, okay? Now this, if you know Gateway Second Edition, this is where usually um, the life skills used to be. And these pages are very much connected to life skills. The basis of the pages are things that are happening in the world, things that students need to know about, things that students need to be informed about, things that can help them with their life at school, but also um, life after school. So it's a new, fresh look at, um, at uh, life skills. And we're encouraging these pages are to do two things, to become great learners and great thinkers. And what's totally new again on these pages is um, we have national UK documentary videos, okay, short videos which have been on the television in the UK to get students to really bring the topic alive. In this case, we're talking about sustainable food solutions connected to this idea about um, flexitarianism, okay. And um, in a minute, we're going to see um, one of these new Gateway to the World videos, which I think are really impactful. The first one, uh, remember, these are all real, real documentary videos. The first one is um, about school lunch in a UK school where they do an experiment where they have insects for school lunch in the chat box. Could you just write down, what do you think the student's reaction will be to having insects for school lunch? How do you think they feel about this? Awful, says Ekaterina. Yuck, gross, disgusting, sick, negative, shock, disgusting, no way, very gross, interested, surprised, Right, okay. Now, um, actually, I think you've summed it up, really, because uh, we're going to see this video now, and we're going to see um, how the students felt about it. Now, one thing about this video, students do quite like um, being disgusted. So some of the students say, yuck, and then they turn away. If you want to turn away, fine. Remember that the video is designed to get some sort of reaction from the students and from you, okay? So if you want to look away, um, do look away. But for example, yeah, Nadia has mentioned proud because it's sustainable. So remember, the students are not eating insects just to do something strange. They're doing it with a very um, clear purpose. Can you hear me? Yes, okay, great. Uh, it's actually really interesting seeing your comments in the chat box because you've got exactly the same mixture of emotions that the students have. In fact, I, I liked somebody saying that ants aren't that disgusting. So, uh, and also some people being very like pretty happy because at least the insects were not alive. Right now, um, there are a few serious points, well, a lot of serious points to make about that video. One is that, um, you know, there is a serious reason for eating insects. Um, another thing is um, the culture point, as the teacher or the headmistress mentions, um, she mentions culture, right? And she mentions that um, she wants her students to realize that the, um, that the, uh, the, you know, the question of what we eat is often dictated by our um, culture. And it's interesting, of course, because um, Gateway to the World sells all around the world, the same as Gateway Second Edition. And of course, in Mexico, which is a very big market, uh, insects are not considered to be a particularly strange thing to eat in Mexico. So it's quite interesting to sort of think about, okay, how we are culturally conditioned by what we eat. 
Um, I think it was Kate, uh, maybe, who's mentioned that the UK, we go from mashed potato to eating insects. Um, yeah, so there's lots of questions. I think another serious question is that even if your students just look at the students there, I think there's an interesting cultural mix of the students, isn't there? Which, again, is something um, that is really interesting for students to realize what a UK school looks like. OK, right. That, of course, was not a usual lunch in British schools. That was an experiment. OK, now, of course, that video, I think, will not leave anybody indifferent. And it's getting students to think about sustainable food. And the question here, then, is that um, what other ways can we make sure food is sustainable? And there is this incredible statistic here which is saying that, for example, one in every five bags of food that people buy in the UK is thrown away, which is um, pretty sad, really. Um, and the question is then, how can we throw away less food, okay? Now, again, in the chat box, would anybody like to just like put any ideas? How can we waste less food? Any ideas? Eat less for a start, okay? Any other reasons? Buy less, exactly, yes. Uh, produce less, yeah. <laughs> I've got a dog, right? So you're saving your sustainable, your dog is the sustainable part. Plan meals better is a nice idea, right? Recycle, manage consumption, right? Now, um, what we do is we get our students to do the same. The idea of these great thinkers pages is to encourage students to think in an organized way. So in this case, what we do is an activity called generate, sort, connect, and elaborate. So first of all, the students generate ideas like we are doing now. And then the ideas that we've generated in the chat box, we could then separate them into different categories. And you can see from my mind map that we've got, for example, cooking, buying, and storing. Um, so we sort our ideas into different categories. The thing is that also these ideas could have connections. So there could be connections between buying and cooking. And so we connect those ideas in the typical way that we do mind maps, okay? So we generate, we sort, we connect, and then we elaborate. So then we look at those ideas and see if we can take them further. So the important thing here is we've got a very clear structure to generate ideas and then to organize them. So this is what we call a great thinking routine. Um, it's uh, uh, also what's interesting is that these routines are based around verbs because we're trying to make thinking as practical as possible, as clear as possible. So I quite like these instructions, which are generate, sort, connect, elaborate, because we're giving them very concrete guidance to how to think about new ideas. These ideas, and um, I do um, advise you if you're interested in this whole question about thinking routines, many of these routines came from the Harvard Graduate School of Education, Project Zero. I've put there two different sources if you want to read more. One of them is very easy to access on the internet, pz.harvard.edu project visible thinking and you'll see lots and lots of ideas and the background to how these visible thinking routines came about so i think it's really interesting if you're interested in the topic also i did a webinar which i imagine some of you saw um, and the webinar archive from macmillan education has a webinar called learning to think thinking to learn um, where I explain these in much more detail. But this was my aim when I was writing Gateway to include these thinking routines. Here are two more. Think, question, explore, okay? So read the title of the text and answer the questions. What do you think you know about the problem? What questions do you have about the topic? And how could you explore to find more information? Um, those, the webinar that I've just mentioned is at the Macmillan Education website. And if you look at the webinar archive, 
And if you put my name, you should find them. The other one, three, two, one, bridge. Okay, so think of three words that quick come quickly to your mind when you think about X topic. Think of two questions you have about the topic. Think of one simile connected to the topic. Then the students read those uh, that text or watch that video or do that listening, and then they see if they want to change any of their words, their questions, or the simile. So these are, Kate, these are all in the middle of the units in the student's book. Each um, uh, unit has one of these spreads. In fact, this spread, okay? So this is in the middle of the unit. One important thing to know about these is they're exactly the same as the life skill spreads, that there is no new grammar in these pages, okay? No new grammar. That means that this is purely concentrating on the video, on the reading, and on the discussion, and on the thinking, okay? Okay, so uh, you'll notice at the bottom, in the bottom right corner, we've got a great learners box. And great learners are active global citizens. So with problems like food waste, why is it so important to think of ourselves as all citizens of just one local, sorry, one global community? Now, I must say that one of the inspirations for this came again from Russia. Um, and it came from the very beginning of Gateway. Uh, you'll see a picture, a photo of my very first visit to Russia at the end of this session. Um, and I came to Russia because we knew that when I, before I began to write Gateway, we knew that we wanted to write a book that was searching for academic excellence. We wanted to um, help students to become great learners. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the International Baccalaureate, but that is another scheme which um, promotes excellence in learners. And in Gateway to the World, we've really concentrated on this idea of trying to get our students to be the best possible learners, helping them to develop as people and not, um, you know, so they're good students, creative students, thinking a lot. If you look at these different elements we've got there, um, great learners act with integrity and honesty. Great learners can think creatively. Um, great learners show empathy, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, great thinkers think globally and act locally. So I believe my personal view of education, educating teenagers, is that we are teaching them English, but we're also trying to encourage them to become better students in general, not just in English, but better learners. Better learners when they particularly go to university. And Gateway to the World, the same as Gateway Second Edition, is really concentrating on creating good, excellent uh, students for university. Students who can learn independently and students who can uh, learn with respect uh, towards others. And I think in 2021, I don't know if you would agree with me, but personally, I believe that this whole area of values, I think is really important. Um, you know, the world is a pretty difficult place at the moment, and we need to encourage students to be the best learner they can and the best person they can too. Now, um, you might think then at the moment, I've been showing you something that's very new in Gateway to the World, but um, don't worry in a way because Gateway to the World follows a very similar pattern to Gateway Second Edition. For example, in our unit, the very first page is vocabulary and the second page is reading. So the format of the unit is the same as always. So it's very comfortable for you because you're following a similar format that you know well. Um, but there are lots of little differences that, um, you know, that if you've been using Gateway for a while that I think you will enjoy. One of them is on the vocabulary page. I'd like you to look at this little box for a second, okay? Use it, don't lose it. Now, our vocabulary pages and our grammar pages, they finish with this little box. And the idea, which I think is really important, is to use the new vocabulary, use the new grammar that they've just learned, but use it in a personalized, communicative, meaningful way. So in this case, the students have just learned vocabulary about food, 
about meals, about describing food, so we get them to use it. And, you know, I like this phrase, use it, don't lose it, because I think you would agree, uh, I hope you would agree, as teachers, the more that teach, uh, the more that students use the new language, the more they remember. We need to get students actively putting the grammar and vocabulary into practice. This particular level, um, Maria, is B1+. Plus, okay, so at the moment I'm talking about B1+. Plus, and the examples that we've seen are B1+. Plus. So we've got this use it, don't lose it. We're getting the students to actively communicate using the new vocabulary or using the new grammar. You'll also see something really important at the bottom of the box. It says reach higher, okay, reach higher. What does that mean? Well, one of the big problems that all um, teachers have with students is the difference of abilities in a class, mixed abilities. And of course, some students always finish really quickly and the others are still working on the activity and it's important that they finish the activities. So the question is, what do you do with the fast finishers? Well, in Gateway to the World, we send them to the back of the book and we give them an extra exercise. You can see on the left, okay, we have another vocabulary exercise, and that is deliberately to keep the fast finishers active, interested, and productive. So we're trying to help with the problem of mixed ability, giving them something extra, keeping them busy, getting them to carry on learning. Now, at the end of the day, you might want all of your students to do this activity, and that is fine. But the activity is specifically useful, I think, for those fast finishers who always finish early. And that's useful on those vocabulary pages. We also have it on grammar pages. And uh, we also have it on reading pages. I don't know if you would agree with me, but reading can be a real problem because some students are fast readers and they finish quite quickly. What we're doing now is we're giving them an extra activity uh, extra comprehension, okay? So they're reaching higher. And again, we're going for excellence. And we're giving the slower students time to finish at their own pace, okay? And again, if you want to get all of your students to do it, for example, for homework, that's fine. But what, what we're doing is we're keeping the fast finishers busy at the moment in the class. The slower learners can do this at home later. And basically, I think uh, what is great is that I can tell you actually, uh, some people ask, what is the most difficult part about writing a book? I can tell you what the most difficult part is. The most difficult part is getting everything to fit on the page. That is really difficult. So having these extra activities, then I think it's great that we've got extra comprehension at the back of the book. I'm not quite sure, Kate, what that question means exactly. Do you want to maybe rephrase that question for me? And I'll try and answer at the end. I'll try and come back to you. And any other questions that you might have, okay? Now, another thing which is familiar but slightly new is on the vocabulary pages. We, You'll notice that it's not just called vocabulary anymore. Uh, it's called vocabulary in context. And in fact, oh, okay, I understand the question now. Is right, reading during the lesson a waste of time? Personally, I don't think it is, as long as the reading is not too long. Uh, personally, I think that at advanced levels, when a text is extremely long, like Cambridge advanced long, um, I think there is an argument for sometimes doing those at home. But I think um, this reading, for example, I would actually do in class, um, giving them 10, 15 minutes. And again, I think 10, 15 minutes quiet time is totally reasonable. I think that's fine. Okay, going back to the vocabulary page, then we are including more contextualized activities. So in this case, um, we've got a mini text and the students put the new words into this mini text. So of course, in Gateway Second Edition, we have always had grammar in context. And now what we've done is we've added on vocabulary in context. You can see also what is uh, interesting is that this text is a culture exchange text. And there are one of these in each unit where the students are reading about life in an English speaking country. OK, so the students are finding out about school food in Australia. 
Uh, for example, in schools in Australia, they have lots and lots and lots of water fountains. Um, do you have lots of water fountains in Russia? We have one or two in Spain, but not hundreds. Of course, Australia, the climate is air very warm all the time, so students need to drink a lot of water. So there's all, already an interesting culture exchange there, thinking about the difference in uh, different countries, which I think is interesting. And again, this is uh, personally part of my philosophy about life, really. Uh, I love this quotation. It is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. Isn't that a wonderful quotation for 2021? We are different. Uh, different countries do things in different ways. But I've always thought that the differences are a great thing, that the differences are what makes the world interesting. The differences are not a problem. The problems are when we don't respect differences. So personally, I love that quote. And it's very much to do with the culture exchange. Let's compare life in Australia with life in Russia and life in Spain. Um, and again, the book is called Gateway to the World because I want our students to be open to the world. So what we have in Gateway to the World are these collaborative projects where they respond directly to those culture exchange texts. The students have found out about school food in Australia, and now they're going to think about school food in their country. What is similar? What's different? Uh, why it's similar? Why it's different? So we, the starting point is the Australia text, and then we guide them, and the students can produce a poster, a presentation, a video message, or an information leaflet. Um, so I think, you know, we're giving the students a choice so that they can respond to what they like the most. And we're guiding them with areas that they could think about. What time do you have lunch? I mean, I'm fascinated, for example, you've already had lunch, I imagine. I haven't had lunch in Spain because lunch um, can be at half past two. What time is school lunch in Russia? School lunch in 12 a.m., okay, so that's more, two, one. Okay, different times maybe in different parts of the world, uh, different parts of Russia, one o'clock, 12 o'clock. Now, for example, if you said to somebody in Spain to have lunch at 12 o'clock, they would call it breakfast, okay? <laughs> so 12 o'clock is breakfast. So, you know, we're comparing, comparing different countries, and we're giving them different ideas to research. And what is very important, again, on these pages is that we're developing skills. So they're not just sort of doing a project. They're developing digital skills, academic skills, collaboration, which I'll come to in a second, and intercultural awareness. So this is this um, comparing different countries. Do you think the food that teenagers like is similar in different countries or not? What could explain the similarities or differences? So getting the students to just contemplate, okay, it could be different or it could be the same. What could possibly explain that similarity or that difference? So these projects are really trying to develop academic skills with the students. Also, and this is really important, you'll notice the little circle there which says virtual classroom exchange. And what we're going to do with Gateway to the World is that we're going to have a platform where students from your school in whatever part of Russia you are can send their project and students from, for example, Mexico or Georgia or from Slovakia or from Austria, Switzerland, um, the Netherlands, they can compare their projects. So we're really trying to get students around the world to come together to use English as a lingua franca, English as the language of communication between teenagers in different countries. So, you know, we're really trying to, as a gateway to the world was the title, because we're really trying to get students to sort of to connect uh, with people from around the world. Um, Okay, so I'm going to carry on. There's lots of um, different things to tell you still. Um, I mentioned collaboration. I think this is something that we really need to encourage with our teenage students. Um, 
So we've got these pieces of advice and we give them the necessary English expressions to do this. So when you work in a team, it can be helpful to take action and make suggestions and to take the initiative. So useful language to do that. Why don't I? If you want, I'll, would you like me to? So um, we're encouraged, sorry, we're encouraging students to work together closely to help one another and we're giving them the English language to do it. Um, when you work in a team, it's essential to listen to everyone and let everybody contribute. Sometimes one or two people can dominate in a group, but the best teams have a balance between everybody, even including the quieter members of the team. In other words, different personality types. We're getting students to respect one another. We've got mixed abilities, but we also have mixed personalities in a classroom. And, you know, sometimes one person dominates everything, but we need to get the team to listen to everybody. And um, then the another one, when you work in a team, it's okay to disagree with others. Again, differences are okay. Differences are natural. But it's always better to be polite and constructive, okay? So we're encouraging our teenage students to be nice to one another, to listen and to respect one another. So useful language, I see what you mean, but. So that's um, a very diplomatic, a very British, if you like, a very diplomatic way of disagreeing. I agree up to a point, but. So again, we're um, encouraging students to be nice to one another. OK, which I think is not a bad thing. Now, this is all very connected to we're getting on to personal um, respect. And this brings the next area, which is also included in Gateway to the World, social and emotional learning. And again, just so that you know, there is a webinar which I did recently, which is called social and emotional learning um, with teenagers. And you can see that in the same place as before, Macmillan Education, the webinar archive. And um, that's a whole session about what social and emotional learning is, why it's important and how we can do it. But basically, it's a question of encouraging students to think about how they feel, to control how they feel a little bit more, to try to manage their emotions and if they can do that, they, they then hopefully they can respond to other people's emotions better. So listen to them and, for example, um, not get angry when somebody disagrees with them. And the way that we do this is, um, in again, in the uh, Great Learners, Great Thinkers pages, we have social and emotional elements as, again, part of life skills that we're teaching. And in this case, this whole unit is about how old people see teenagers and how teenagers see older people. And again, encouraging that respect and encouraging people to think beyond uh, stereotypes. So old people have stereotypical ideas about teenagers. Um, why? Where do those ideas come from? OK, uh, let's get students to think about that. Um, what are the positive attitudes towards teenagers and what do you think society should think about teenagers and vice versa? So how do you see old people? How do you see elderly people? And again, we've got a video. We always have videos in these pages, OK, where there's a lovely video with somebody um, who who has Hollywood makeup to um, become an elderly person and he experiences life in that way. So we're talking about empathy. We're talking about being open minded and positive. Um, and again, these are all um, continued at the back of the book where students think about stereotypes. Um, and again, you know, this unit is about ageism, but of course we're indirectly getting them to think about racism, sexism, and all of those stereotypical ideas that we have. Again, getting students to think deeper. 
Right, so uh, B1, I mean, it very much depends on your countries, but uh, it, for example, in Spain, it's being used between 12 and like 18. Um, remember, what we're doing all the time is we're giving students the uh, elements to get them to think uh, about these topics in um, a serious way, according to whatever age the, the students are. Okay, now these are all uh, the new things that are in Gateway uh, to the World. So we've got completely new reading text. We've got completely new listening texts. And that's so that uh, everything is updated to reflect the world in 2021. And it's also so that you as teachers, are, oops, teachers are, I think something jumped then, and I don't know why. Sorry, I'm just going to go back. Uh, right, sorry, I was saying, yeah, new texts so that you are also interested in the text, because I think maybe um, teachers need to have interesting texts too. We've got these new documentary videos that I've shown you one example. We've got thinking skills. We've got social and emotional learning, which I've just explained. We have culture exchange, where students read about different countries. We've got collaborative projects, which also include this idea of sharing classroom projects with other classrooms around the world. We've got vocabulary and context. We've got um, more mini text on the grammar pages. So we've always had grammar, uh, instead of just simple sentences, like I was having a shower when the telephone rang, we've also always had grammar texts. And we've got even more of those. We've got the use it, don't lose it, which I've already explained. And we've got reaching higher for mixed ability. But lots of new things. But don't worry, because again, we have lots of old things that you like. So what we've tried to do is to keep things that have been popular. So the format of the book is the same. Another thing which is the same, but what we're trying to do is make it new, is the flipped classroom videos, OK? And I believe some of your uh, students um, are probably using the flipped classroom videos. Can I ask you, do you use the flipped classroom videos with the whole class or do students watch them individually? Whole class or individually? Maybe in the chat box, I'd be interested to know. Individually, whole class, individually, class, class, both ways, right? Uh, that's what I imagined, okay? So many people use them um, with the whole class and many people use them with the individual ones. In Gateway to the World, we've got four different types of um, flipped classroom videos. Two are using animation. One is using two teenage bloggers. And the other one is me again. And I'm doing lots of stupid things, as always. Um, I In one of the videos, I do some break dancing. And the question for you is, would you like to see me uh, would you like to see my video of me breakdancing? Yes or no? Just type in the tap box. Sure, yes. Well, that's good. You had no choice, actually, because I was going to show it to you. Even if you said no, I was going to show you uh, a video of me breakdancing. We're going to go to the video now, if we can, Yelena. I'm going to switch my microphone off. Hello everyone, welcome to Grammar with Dave. Do you like breaking or breakdancing? You probably know I'm an English teacher. But do you know that when I was young, I was a great breakdancer? I went to special lessons with a friend. We had training every day. One day, I saw there was a breakdancing competition in my city. I went to the competition, but I lost. The next year, I did the competition again. That time, I won. I got this cup. Today, we're looking at the past simple affirmative. 
You remember that regular verbs in the past simple end in ed. So, for example, we say played, worked or started. But many common verbs don't end in ed. They have irregular past forms. Let's look at our examples again. Went is the past of go. Had is the past of have. Saw is the past of see. Lost is the past of lose. Did is the past of do. Won is the past of win. And got is the past of get. So, do you want to see a photo of me breakdancing? Look, here you are. What? What do you mean it's not me? Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Okay. Uh, can you hear me again? Hopefully. Right now, I think you could imagine, right, that I, w I wasn't going to do any breakdancing there. I, I, I'm sure that was no surprise. And uh, obviously, I am definitely not a breakdancing champion. Okay. No, I didn't, Tatiana. In the end, it was a little bit of a cheat. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to have to practice. I don't think my knees are good enough anymore. Right. Um, we're just going to get... We're getting to the end of the session. I asked at the beginning of this session um, about uh, those words. I'm just going to explain them all, okay? Plogging. Plogging is a mixture of jogging and picking up rubbish, okay? And so the students listen to that whole idea, which is a very interesting idea for the community, right? So where, uh, where people, they go for a run and at the same time they pick up litter, Upcycling. Upcycling, of course, is similar to recycling, but instead of simply using the product again, you make them better. OK, so maybe you take an old, um, I don't know, maybe you take some uh, an old shirt and you decorate it in a new excellent way and it becomes better than it was before. So you're not just using something again, you're making it better. Exactly, Ekaterina, it's exactly the same as upgrading. So instead of recycling, you're upcycling. Uh, sharenting, okay, sharenting is a mixture of parents and sharing. And it refers to parents who put photographs uh, of their children on social media without the children's permission. And of course, some parents put up pictures which are not very flattering for their kids. And in fact, in Italy, um, they're not allowed to do this. It's illegal, okay? So we ask the whole question, which of course is interesting for young people, I think, should your parents be able to share any photo of you that they like, okay? That's sharenting. Uh, then we talked about FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. So you think all of your friends are doing something exciting and you're the only one who isn't. So that's FOMO um, and it's fear of missing out. One of my favorite words is snacksident, okay? And snacksident is a blend, okay? A blend between snack and accident. So, of course, a snacksident is when you take a packet of biscuits, you are going to eat just one biscuit, and in the end, you eat the whole packet. That is what we call a snacksident, okay? Great word, isn't it? It's, English is great, because we can have words like snacksident. I don't know if you could have that in Russian. You couldn't in Spanish, but snacksident is just a great word. Phobo is the fear of better options. Have you ever wanted to buy, for example, a new television or maybe a new phone? And then suddenly you find that there are 20, 25, 30 different televisions, 30 different phones. You don't know which one to buy. And in the end, you don't buy anything. That is what we call FOBO, fear of better options. And it can be a problem in life. So you think you want to get a new job and you start to look and then you think, oh, well, I could do this. I could do this. I could. I'm not going to do anything. You don't do anything. So fear of better options 
better options can stop you from doing anything in life. And another favorite of mine is gastrophysics, okay? And we've got a true or false quiz, and then the students listen to find out which sentences are true or false. If you look at number two, gastrophysics looks at the relationship between our senses, our surroundings, and the food we eat. And that is actually true. That's what gastrophysics is. Did you know that, for example, when a restaurant plays classical music, it usually makes people spend more because you think that you're in a very aristocratic environment and you don't think about money, okay? Whereas, for example, restaurants with loud music, they usually have loud music to get you to drink more. So there was a whole branch of science called gastrophysics. I find that topic fascinating. Okay, I'm coming to the end. Remember that if anybody wants to stick around, we're going to have a, a, a short session with breakout rooms where I might try and come in and say hello to you personally. Um, obviously, the whole idea of this session is uh, to celebrate Macmillan Russia's 20th anniversary. I just want to show you, look at this. Look, somebody asked how young I was. Here, I look like a little boy, okay? And this was 2009, and it was my first trip to Russia. And... Um, like this was literally the first time I came to Russia. Amazing. Uh, I loved it straight away. And uh, that trip, I didn't give any talks. I just came to uh, go into some schools to talk to teachers and to find out more about schools in Russia. So that was my very first visit. Uh, my second one, um, this was uh, visiting the Moscow Metro, of course. And uh, I was trying to get some luck before my first Macmillan Spring Festival. And um, I think we saw a photograph before. Look at that. I mean, this is one of my favorite photographs. In fact, I still get goosebumps when I look at this. And for me, I did rub the nose, yeah. When I um, went and gave my first talk in the, I think it's the Dom Kino in, in Moscow, what an experience, an amazing place. So uh, as I think Natalia mentioned at the beginning of this, this talk, I've been to Russia. I've been lucky enough to have made seven trips. I should have made an eighth trip in November, but of course I can't, uh, I couldn't go. Moscow, St. Petersburg, Yekaterinburg, Samara and Novosibirsk. And here are some photos. I'm looking very cold there. I don't think I had the right clothes. Of course, in St. Petersburg, lots of you from St. Petersburg there today, I imagine. Uh, obviously in Samara, Novosibirsk. And this was, of course, in Yekaterinburg. That was my latest trip, which was 2018. So I have to get back again one day. So, um, yeah, and of course, uh, every time I've presented a new edition of Gateway, I have actually gone to Russia such a shame that this, uh, uh, with this pandemic, I can't go. I've signed lots of books for you. I don't know if anybody out there has a signed copy of Gateway from me, um, but if I ever get back to Russia, which I hope I will, I will sign your books as soon as you, uh, as soon as you show me a book, I'll sign your Gateway to the World for you. So real pleasure being with you. Uh, yeah, do stay in touch. Remember that I'm always available on uh, Facebook facebook.com teach with dave yeah well uh, i would love to sign your books if if i meet you or if i meet your students um yeah that join me at teach with dave and also um i i think you know that there is uh, teach with dave master classes which maybe uh, macmillan russia will tell you all about um where you can join me for some sessions about teaching teenagers uh maria has a question about uh, working on each section it very much depends on your students um, I would say as a, as a very simple guide, maybe we're talking about one page for a lesson of 45 minutes, for example. Depends so much on the size of your class, on the age of your students. I've been, I've been to more cities in Russia than an average Russian. <laughs> well, I've been very lucky, yeah. And uh, I hope that I uh, do get a chance to come back one day. Thank you so much. Um, I think, Natalia, if you're around again and we want to um, explain how the breakout rooms will work. So if anybody does want to hang around, uh, please do. And I will try and say hello to you in a small group now. OK, thank you to so many people, so many people here today. Uh, if anybody has a question, they can ask me in the breakout room, too, or ask me on Facebook. 
Far oh, East, thank you. I've never been, yeah. but I'll have to go too. So probably next year. So thank you, Dave. Thank you. See you in breakout rooms. Uh, дорогие коллеги, uh, у нас сегодня такой будет маленький эксперимент, uh, прежде чем мы вот закончим нашу основную часть. Uh, я хотел бы вас пригласить uh, на uh, такой вот маленькие групповые встречи в breakout rooms. Это наш сегодня эксперимент. Но прежде я хотела бы uh, ответить на такие вопросы, сколько уровней uh, курса нового и... Действительно, курс будет fully flexible, то есть вы можете использовать его как для занятий face-to-face, -face, так и для дистанционных занятий. Уровни A1+, plus, A2, B1, B1+, plus and B2, они будут уже к сентябрю, то есть если вы планируете в новом учебном году работать по пособиям, они уже, уже будут в России, и уровень B2+, plus и C1, они будут уже в следующем году. Пособие будет содержать не только книгу, но и цифровую книгу, рабочую тетрадку с доступом в онлайн рабочую тетрадь, будет presentation kit для учителя в Teachers App, и выглядит он будет следующим образом, то есть у вас будет цифровая версия учебников Teachers App, и у учащихся, у студентов будет еще и доступ к on-the-go practice, то есть это э, такое приложение с элементами геймификации, э, когда учащиеся могут выполнять упражнения с автоматической проверкой, э, выполнять их несколько раз, э, получать такие своеобразные награды, и также будет еще функция пуш-напоминания о домашнем задании, то есть э, никто из наших студентов не забудет выполнить домашнее задание. Uh, несколько слов о и e goodie bag, uh, таких вот полезных материалах, которые мы приготовили вам. Uh, все, о чем сегодня говорил Дэйв, вы найдете в брошюре, которую мы в follow-up email вам ставим. Также все сегодня участники получают доступ к flipping book, это uh, gateway to the world, уровень B1, то есть у вас будет открыт доступ uh, именно вот к этому пособию. Uh, вы можете посмотреть все материалы, то есть это вот um, flipping book, с доступом на 30 дней вам будет доступно, вы можете увеличивать, посмотреть, как это работает, и также будет выслан вам доступ, чтобы посмотреть, как работает Presentation Kit для студентов. Еще один маленький подарок – курс Gateway to the World. Он будет содержать еще даже вот на обложке, не знаю, будет вам видно или нет, версия на слово, такой Alliance Kahoot, то есть будет уже готовое упражнение, и мы вам также сегодня участникам в честь нашего юбилея высылаем доступ к упражнениям, заданиям уже готовым, как хоть ко всем уровням, сейчас вы видите только A1+, Plus и B1, у вас будут доступ ко всем уровням, которые есть. И еще один, о чем сегодня говорил, это Teach with Dave Masterclasses, становитесь участниками тренинга с Дэйвом, первый будет уже... 14 апреля в 2 часа по британскому времени. Это будет серия мастер-классов, их будет три. И уже в, в октябре те преподаватели, которые прослушают все три мастер-класса, они могут принять участие в итоговом занятии с тренерами Nile Norwich Institute for Language Education. Ну что ж, уважаемые коллеги, я благодарю вас, сегодня за то, что вы стали участниками нашего праздника. Еще раз приглашаю вас в магазины наших дистрибьюторов, где наши коллеги ждут вас, готовы поделиться праздничным настроением. А у нас, как я уже сказала, такой для вас сегодня будет маленький сюрприз, это эксперимент. Мы попробуем сейчас с вами через несколько минут, мы объявим пятиминутный перерыв, встретиться в breakout rooms. Если у вас есть желание а, пообщаться между собой, а, Breakout Rooms будет совершенно небольшим, это 10 минут. Если у вас есть желание включить камеру, а, вы также можете это сделать, а, включить микрофон. Мы впервые это делаем для нескольких сот участников. А, мы надеемся, что у нас техника не подведет. А, вы можете познакомиться и а, 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 обсудить, например, какой из... Uh, вот элементов нового курса Gateway to the World uh, вам понравился, точно будет работать. Uh, чем отли... что, что нового в этом курсе, то, что вам понравилось, или наверняка uh, вот понравится вашим студентам. Я еще раз вас благодарю. Мы объявляем пятиминутный uh, перерыв. Если вы готовы потом uh, к 
нам остаться с нами, то через пять минут вы уже окажетесь в breakout rooms с 25 другими коллегами из разных регионов нашей страны. А я знаю, что сегодня к нам подключаются даже коллеги из других стран. И э, мы будем с вами э, между собой обсуждать. И, может быть, даже в вашу группу попадет и Дэйв Спенсер. Большое вам спасибо. Ждите от меня электронное письмо. На этом наша официальная часть заканчивается. А через пять минут ровно. Если вы остаетесь с нами, добро пожаловать в Breakout Rooms. Это наш сегодняшний такой эксперимент. Спасибо большое. Через пять минут встречаемся с Breakout Rooms. Если хотите, обязательно готовьте камеру и микрофоны. Спасибо. Спасибо за поздравления. Надеемся, что мы будем отмечать вместе с вами и 25, и 30, и 35 лет представительства издательства Маквилла в России. Спасибо. До новых встреч. Уважаемые коллеги, мы возвращаемся назад после нашего такого эксперимента. Сегодня поставьте, пожалуйста, какой-то значок в, в чате. Понравился ли вам такой эксперимент с breakout rooms? So, Dave, how many groups did you visit? Uh... I think about five, maybe. Five. Oh. I managed to get to five rooms, so it was good. I saw people that I, I know, and uh, I met some new friends, too. So it was really nice, yeah. People with so I stuck in one group and we discussed the, the features of, of the new course. Uh, right. We talked about the access code, uh, then the components, um, and teachers like the video, the new type of video, so it's more dynamic, so they mm -hmm. mentioned it. So thank you very much for the participation. No, it was really good fun. And uh, I think this uh, breakout rooms was nice, yeah? For, for It was, uh, as I say, when you give a webinar, you just see names in a chat box. So it's really mm -hmm. nice when you actually get to see people's faces mm -hmm. and to um, speak to them directly. So thank you to yeah. everybody who, yeah. who, um, who stayed. And obviously, uh, I'm sorry, I, I probably couldn't get to every room, uh, but I did my best. Yeah, because there were several hundreds of teachers, and that's why we couldn't have moderators for any group. So I was in one group, then uh, my colleagues were in four other groups, but we've got just several um i think 20 breakout rooms so that's why we can't have moderators but thank you rina so probably next time we'll ask you for help to be our moderator so it's our first experience yeah okay. exactly and uh, you know i think this is what happens with teachers right when we're teaching online sometimes uh, you're experimenting and you're not sure how it works um but it's good isn't it you know trying new things um and you can always uh, get them to go better and better So yeah, actually, it's interesting because mm -hmm. somebody just said that your some teachers are shy. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe a lesson is if we do this again, then people shouldn't be shy. They should just have a go if they want to say hello. Yeah. But yeah. that was great. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. That was a really great uh, experience the whole day and um, a great way to celebrate an anniversary. Yeah. Thank you very much. So okay, probably next say, time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, thank you, Dave. So, and meet you again one day all. Be great. Okay. See yeah, you, in everybody. Person. Yeah. Yeah, face to face. So thank you very much. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Yes, stay safe, yeah. Stay safe. Bye bye.